Hello scientists and welcome back. Dr. Monica and I are very excited that you're joining us today because today we are doing a science experiment slash magic trick. Now get ready because this might blow your mind. Dr. Monica and I are going to work together with our brains and we are actually going to move this cup without touching it. And I want to show you, you can blow on it. It's a pretty heavy cup. The force of my breath is not allowing it to move across the table. It's not enough force. Okay, friends, I want to give you a closer up look of our cup. So it's a regular circular cup. It is a cylinder, so it has a circle on each side. It can roll, but it won't roll unless the force is acted upon it, okay? So I'm gonna put it down, okay? And it's stationary. I'm gonna move so you guys can see it better. Okay, Mo Dr. Monica, are you ready for this? Uh, maybe? I think you can do it, just... Come on, growth mindset, Dr. Monica. You got this, we've got this, we're a good team. And if it doesn't work the first time, we can try again. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, and focus on moving the cup. Three. Oh, so close. Ooh, that was a really close one. Okay, let's try again. Ready? Let's stop it from rolling. And try to, oh, another good one. Okay, but let's see if we can get it to roll all the way over. Ready and go. Ooh. There you go, you did it. I'm so proud of you. Aw, Katie, thanks. And do you guys wanna know how we did that magic trick? Well, usually magicians don't share their tricks, but in this case, it's actually science. So we will share our trick with you, but you'll have to wait till the end of the video. I will say that it's connected to our focus of the day. Dr. Monica, can you please help me read our focus of the day? Uh-huh. <clears throat> I can demonstrate the properties of a magnetic object. Magnet? I've heard of that word before. Me too. And I bet our friends at home have as well. So let's, let me get all my stuff set up and we're gonna do some really fun magnetic demonstrations today. To give us some schema about magnetic objects and magnetism, I'm gonna read us a story. But while I'm reading, I'm gonna pause the story and demonstrate some of those things for you. So our story is called Magnets Push and Magnets Pull. And this is a nonfiction informative informative story that teaches all about magnets by David A. Adler, illustrated by Anna Raff. A world without magnets would be a world without computers, printers, cell phones, televisions, vacuum cleaners, and microwave ovens. It's a magnet's invisible pulling and pushing force called magnetism that helps power all of these devices. Magnets are attracted to anything made of iron, steel, nickel, or cobalt, and some less plentiful materials, including neodymium and samarium, maybe. <laughs> there are two kinds of magnets, simple magnets and electromagnets. You are probably most familiar with simple magnets, the kind you find in toys or used to hold papers to your refrigerator doors. Do you have a simple magnet? If you do, you can use it as a metal tester, but be careful with your magnet. Do not bring it close to a watch, clock, computer, television, or any delicate instrument. It could actually damage it. Now, most people know that magnets are attracted to metal, but that's not entirely true. There are some kinds of metal that are attracted to mag or that magnets are attracted to, but not all. So looking at what I have in front of me, I have a bunch of coins, I have some paper clips, I have a screw, I have some staples, I have a candle lid, I have my mixer um, thing. Which ones do you think the magnet's going to be attracted to? So go ahead and pause, look at what's down here, make your hypothesis, and then we'll test. Okay, let's test it out. In our reading, we heard that anything that's iron, steel, nickel, co 
cobalt, or two elements that I was not sure how to pronounce. If it's made of those, then it's attracted to a magnet. If it's not, then it won't be. So let's first try paper clips, ready? I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> the magnet is attracted to the paper clips. It is pulling them closer. Let's try the coins, or let's try first the pennies. They are a separate color. Mm -mm. Not attracted. Okay, let's try the dimes. Nope. Nickels? Nope. Quarter? Nope. So that means our money is not one of those materials that I listed, so it is not attracted to a magnet. Let's give the screw a try. Yep. Uh, staples? Mm-hmm. Candle lid? <laughs> yep. KitchenAid mixer? Nope. Interesting. All right. Now the magnet I just did that demonstration with, that's a simple magnet. In our reading, we heard that there are simple and electromagnets. So a simple magnet could look like this. It could look like one that's on your refrigerator right now. But a simple magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. And those two poles are the strongest magnetic parts of the magnet. If I drop a paper clip, say on top, it's gonna get pulled towards one of the poles. Try that again, slow motion. Now, if you do have a circular magnet, like one on your refrigerator, you still have two poles. They're just on opposite sides. Here's my south pole and here's my north pole. And I can figure out which side of my circle magnet is the north and south pole by seeing which one's pulled and which one, which one is repelled. So I'm putting this side and I cannot put them together unless without a lot of force because they're actually repelling away from each other, which means both of these are south poles. So I'm gonna take my mapa and I'm gonna record an S for south pole, which means if I tried to put together the opposite side with the south pole, it should pull closer, ready? Just like that. So this one would be my north pole, which is going to repel away from this north pole. See? Lots of repelling happening here. It's actually pushing away and it's a decently strong magnet. So it would take a lot of work from me, a lot of force to push them together. It's easy or I could do it, but it takes a lot. So that's a simple magnet and those are the poles. Magnets can be all different strengths. If your magnet is strong enough, it will work through paper, water, and glass, or solid liquid and gas is another way to think of that. I'm gonna demonstrate the magnet pulling through both gas, liquid, and solids right now. So in my hand, I have paper clips. All around us is air, which is a gas. So you see the paper clips. Now I can pull my magnets closer, closer, closer. and I did not have to touch them. They pulled away from my hand because that magnetic pull was so strong. Now I can do the same thing on my paper plate. Now see the magnet, or see the paper clips? Here's my magnet underneath. So I have a solid object in between my metal and my magnet. And watch, watch the magnets. Ooh, this one's a really strong one. And last but not least, check this out. Now here I have a liquid water inside of my bowl. I have paper clips all on the bottom and here's my magnet. I'm gonna move the magnet closer, closer, closer until the paper clips are actually pulled through the water to my magnet. If you guys have magnets around your house, there's lots of really fun ways to practice with them and to learn more about magnetism. So one of my favorite ways is to take a magnet and to rubber band it to a toy car. And the wheels in the toy car, the wheels and axles, which will be a connection to our next video, the wheels help it move really easily. So I'll move it down. 
and you can see the North Pole is red, the South Pole is blue. And when I use another magnet, I can show that pushing and pulling really easily. She can even make it change direction. <laughs> Sailors, hikers, pilots, and others use compasses to help them find their way. The needle inside of a compass is really just a tiny magnet. One end of the needle always points north. Look at a globe. There we go. The most northern part of the globe is labeled the North Pole. The most southern part is labeled the South Pole. The poles of every magnet always point north and south because the Earth is just one huge magnet with a relatively weak magnetic field. Its magnetic pull is strongest at its two poles, its two ends, North Pole and South Pole. You can make a magnet. Take a large steel paper clip and hold it close to some iron fillings. If the fillings don't stick to the clip, you know that the clip is not magnetic. Now take your bar magnet. Start with one pole of the magnet pressed against one end of the paper clip. Rub it along the clip to the other end. Do this again and again, 25 to 30 times. Rub the same pole of the magnet against the clip, always in the same direction. Hold the large paper clip close to some iron fillings, filings, does the clip attract the filings? If it does, the paper clip is now a magnet. Okay, friends, we're gonna test out those directions on actually creating a simple magnet. So here is a really strong, oh, like really strong metal uh, simple magnet. So if I hold my strong simple magnet close to these key filings, look what happens little bit at first. But those little tiny filings are being pulled by the magnetic field of this simple magnet. So try the same thing, but with a regular paper clip. Nothing's happening because it is not yet magnetic. So I'm gonna see if I can magnetize this paper clip using a simple magnet. So I'm gonna see, okay, this is my north side. I'm gonna rub my north side on my paper clip about 30 times in one direction. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Okay, so now that I've rubbed the north side 30 times, let's see if it made a difference in my magnetism. The filings are really small, but you can see that some of them are now being attracted to my paper clip. So I was able to create a simple magnet. That's pretty neat. So far we've only looked at simple magnets, but electromagnets are actually the magnets that we see working all the time all around the world. So I wanna show you guys how you can also create an electromagnet. So I took a nail, which is currently not magnetized, and I wrapped it in coated copper wire and I made sure that the ends of the copper wire, I took the coating off so that they were exposed. And those two ends, I'm gonna to connect to a nine volt battery. So, if I can hook it right on there. Now the nine volt battery is gonna get pretty warm. So if you do have the materials to try this out at home, just make sure that you're doing it with a grown up's help. So I'm gonna let that charge up just a little. And now that my nail has been connected to my battery and it has turned into an electromagnet, it goes from being not magnetic to magnetic. Pretty cool. Let's see if I can get some of these filings. 
cute. Oh, it's getting hot. <sighs> it's still not a very strong magnet, not compared to the simple magnets I've been working with, but magnetic nonetheless. Why were you able to turn your paper clip into a magnet? All metals are made of molecules, minuscule particles too small to see. Scientists tell us that the molecules that make up iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt are just tiny magnets that are normally in a jumble. When you rub the paper clip, you align the tiny magnets until all the northern poles were pointing north and all the southern poles were pointing south. With all the magnets lined up, the paper clip became one large magnet. And there's before with all the poles going, pointing different directions and after they're all going the direction that made it into a simple magnet. Magnets can lose their magnetic power when they are hit really hard or exposed to extreme heat. Magnets can also multiply. When you break a magnet in half, you create two smaller magnets, each with a north and south pole. Electromagnets, sometimes called on and off magnets, use electricity to create their magnetic fields. When an electric current passes through a wire, it creates only a weak magnetic field. Wrapping a wire with an electric current flowing through it around an iron rod turns the rod into a magnet. The tighter the coils of the wire, the more turns and the stronger the electric current, the stronger the magnet. If the electric current is turned off, the electromagnet use, loses its power. That's why they're sometimes called on and off. Electromagnets are used in buzzers and bells, computers, televisions, and many other electric devices. They power all electric motors. You can't see magnetism, but you can see what it does. It's difficult to imagine a world without magnets. Oh, referring back to the beginning of our video, Dr. Monica and I showed you a magic trick, but I told you that we would tell you how we did it because it's not really magic, it's actually science. So at the beginning, Dr. Monica moved the cup with her mind. Now, after we've learned all this about magnets, do you have any guesses on how we did it? So inside of the cup is actually a north and south pole magnet, just like we've been using a bar magnet. And inside of Dr. Monica is an extra strong magnet. So I put the magnet right at her mouth, but I made sure that the south pole was pointing here to the south pole on here so that they would repel away from each other. And when they got close enough, it's exactly what they did. Just like that. So it'd be cool if you could come up with your own science experiments slash magic tricks at home and maybe, uh, maybe tricks and siblings or a family member. Now magnets are really easy to connect to physics, to our force and motion study, because magnets are naturally pushing and pulling all the time. So in your uh, choice board, you guys have your own magnetic book. You can create it yourself. And then using the information that we talked about in our video and the information in your mini book, you guys are going to read some true and false facts and determine which ones go in which category up here. And using what we know about magnets, we're gonna continue our study on force and motion. So scientists, you're awesome. Keep it up, stay curious, bye.